Hello everyone. Welcome to AVLSI lecture number 31 part 1. In today's topic, we will be discussing the common mode response of asymmetric differential pair. So let's begin and revise our topic of symmetric differential pair whose common mode response we have uh, completed before our Diwali break. So let's continue. So what we have over here is my differential pair with a common mode input as V in of CM and we have a constant current source. So in the next diagram, this constant current source is replaced by a very high output impedance RSS, okay? Uh, next, what did we found out that we found out that the voltage Vx and Vy is almost the same since Vx and Vy is equal to VDT minus ID, uh, I mean, uh, we can say ISS into RD, which was same. So we connected the output nodes together, v, uh, X and Y. So when we connected the output nodes together, the equivalent circuit of, uh, you know, previous circuit becomes something like this. So we have two resistors in parallel RD and RD. So that will become RD by two. So we uh, two resist, uh, two transistors, its gate terminal is connected together. Their drain terminal is connected together and the source terminal is also connected together. So they are completely in parallel. It becomes a composite device. We call it M1 plus M2. And we have RSS connected and input is V in of CM. Now for this network, if you identify such a circuit, uh, that is figure number 31.1.3. It's basically a common source amplifier with source degeneration. So what's the formula for, I mean, assuming that lambda is equal to zero and no body effect, the common mode gain of the circuit is given by V out upon V in of CM will be given by minus of RD divided by two, the whole divided by one upon twice GM plus RSS. So that's the formula. You can refer the handout of common source amplifier with source degeneration, you will get it. So V out upon V in of CM will be AVCM, okay? Uh, that is the common mode voltage gain due to common mode input. So that is given by minus of RD by two, the whole divided by one upon twice GM plus RSS, where GM is the transconductance of each M1 and M2 respectively. So what does the above discussion tell us? The above discussion tell us that due to the finite output impedance of the tail current source. So remember, instead of ISS, we have used a finite output impedance. This has resulted in some common mode gain in a symmetric differential pair. So basically what should have happened is the common mode voltage gain for a symmetric differential pair should have been zero ideally. But since we have a finite output impedance of a tail current source. Uh, this will result in some non-zero common mode gain. That's what we have seen and that's a problem. Also, due, during manufacturing, random mismatches may appear between the two sides of the differential pair. So now it may be asymmetric differential pair. For example, the transistor dimensions of M1 and M2 might slightly differ. The load resistors RD1 and RD2 might slightly differ in value. Therefore, if the circuit suffers from asymmetrics, uh, asymmetricities and the finite tail current uh, source impedance, then the differential output will be corrupted as a result of change in the input common mode level. So that's the learning we are taking from this. And uh, yeah, let us analyze the next part that is uh, circuit with asymmetric differential pair. So let us analyze that uh, we will, uh, you know, see the common mode response of asymmetric differential pair. That means the circuit is not symmetric. Let us assume this uh, mismatch in the resistors. So register RD1 is RD and register RD2 is slightly deviated. It's RD plus delta RD. Rest, everything remains the same. Okay. So RD1 is RD and RD2 is RD plus delta RD, which delta RD denotes a small mismatch. So let's say RD will be 22 kilo ohm. RD plus delta RD might be 22.5 kilo ohm. So there is a slight mismatch. Otherwise, the circuit is symmetric. Uh, now, if we assume that lambda for both the transistors is zero and uh, it's, uh, it's free of any body effect, we can clearly see that Vx is not equal to Vy. Okay. Why? Because Vx is Vdd minus, uh, you know, Id by two into Rd. But Vy is not equal to Vx basically now because Rd now will be 
R D plus delta R D. So V X is not equal to V Y. That means there is a differential gain between X and Y. Let us assume that X and uh, M one and M two are identical. So they are G M one and G M two are same. And now if I want to write V X expression in terms of V in of C M, I can write it in this form directly. So it will be V X will be minus G M R D. Divided by one plus twice GM into RSS into V in of CM. Now you will wonder where do we get this formula from? How confidently I have written this. So let's see this. So we have analyzed this circuit before, right? So in this circuit, what was the formula? A V of CM will be R D by two. So this two we take it down. So we'll get uh, GM R D divided by one plus twice GM RSS. So from here we are getting the formula. V out is equal to Minus of GM RD divided by one plus twice GM into RSS. From here we are writing it. Uh, yeah, here it is. Again, I repeat, VX one-sided output will be minus GM into RD divided by one plus twice GM into RSS into the input common mode voltage V in of CM. Now let's say due to the change in the resistances, I mean due to change in the input common mode voltage. Your Vx output Vx also changes. So let's say that uh, delta Vx is equal to minus Gm into Rd divided by one plus twice Gm into RSS into delta V in of Cm. So a small change in the common mode level has caused a change in the output level also. So now if I want to write delta Vx upon delta V in, which is actually uh, you know will be given by Minus R D one, which is a voltage in fact, right? Because a voltage divided by a voltage will be another voltage. So this will be equal to minus I D one into R D, where I D one is nothing but uh, if you compare these two formulas, it will be G M divided by one plus twice G M R S S, correct? And in the second case, if I want to write delta V Y, so only one change will be there. Instead of R D, we will write R D plus delta R D. And now, if I want to write delta V Y upon delta V in of C M, it will be minus I D two, which is again I D two will be G M divided by one plus twice G M R S S, correct? And your R D plus delta R D. So as you can see, the circuit is no longer symmetric, and V X minus V Y is not equal to zero. So since M one and M two are identical, their current I D one and I D two will be increased by the same amount also, right? So your V X and V Y change by the different amounts, as evident from here, because I D one and I D two are increasing by same amount, but due to the difference in the mismatch in the resistors, the V X and V Y change by different amounts. Now, what is the common observation we observe over here is that a common mode change, that is a delta V in of C M, at the input introduces a differential component at the output. This means that Your circuit will exhibit a common mode to differential conversion. I repeat again: if there is a small change in the uh, input common mode level, you know, input common mode voltage at the input, then it introduces a differential component at the output. That is, V X minus V Y is not equal to zero. Now, let us see this effect of common mode noise in presence of a resistor mismatch. So let's say we have applied a differential mode signal to the gate terminals of M1 and M2. Uh, your ISS is replaced by a high resistance, high impedance RSS value, and there is a resistor mismatch RD, and here it is RD plus delta RD. Correct? The circuit is asymmetric, and let's say we have a noise signal in the form of your common mode signal, which is shown in the red color. This is my differential signal. Okay, out of phase differential signal we applied to both the terminals. Now. Um, You know, at the output, what are we expected to get? A differential amplifier should amplify only the difference between the two input signals. Okay, but right now we have a common mode noise signal also. So as you can see, at the output we have the differential signal, but the noise signal is overriding a differential signal. So we say that we have a corrupted differential output. Okay, so that's the effect of common mode noise in presence of a resistor mismatch. So the circuit corrupts the amplified differential signal by the input common mode change if the input of the differential pair includes both differential 
as well as the common mode noise. Now, what's the summary? The summary is that of this topic, which we have discussed about uh, common mode response of asymmetric differential amplifier is that the common mode response depends on the output resistance of the tail current source. Okay, and asymmetricities in the circuit that is uh, mismatch in the resistor value, mismatch in the transistors, right? So it leads to two effects. It leads to the variation of output common mode level. So in absence of uh, any mismatch, right? So the output common mode level will be disturbed. And then when there is a presence of a mismatch, there will be a conversion of common mode variation to the output differential component. Okay, and the second effect is the most uh, is the more adverse or severe effect which we have to tackle. Okay, so yeah, we have completed with the topic coverage of this session, and uh, we have studied in this session about uh, you know um, we have analyzed the common mode response of a asymmetric differential pair due to mismatch in the load registers. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. Next time we will uh, continue with this discussion and we'll see the common mode response of asymmetric differential pair due to mismatch in the transistor itself. Okay, so until then, have a good day and thank you.